Welcome to our webinar on the updated 2017-2018 Smarter Balance Interim Assessments. This presentation, entitled Using Interim Assessment Data, provides ideas about using the information from the interim assessments to inform instruction. This is the second webinar in our interim webinar series. My name is Dr. Christy Alberino, and I have been an ELA consultant for the Bureau of Student Assessment for more than 12 years. I have served in a national leadership role with the Smarter Balance Consortium, focusing on English language arts across grades three through eight and high school. In this presentation, we will discuss how to access and use the Smarter Balance interim assessment results to support instructional next steps in mathematics and English language arts literacy instruction. I plan to delve into how some interim assessment block data is directly linked to the digital library with access to specific resources and teacher lessons that focus on explicit standards and concepts measured within the assessment blocks. I also plan to offer ideas for embedding the blocks in classroom instruction without traditionally administering the blocks in a formal test setting. Lastly, I will share just a few of the numerous resources available to you for using the interims on both the CSDE and Smarter Balance websites. Please feel free to contact our office at 860-713-6860 with any questions you have following this presentation. In order to access the systems we discussed today, you will need access to the Connecticut Comprehensive Assessment Program portal. There are two ways to access the portal directly, with the address above or via the Connecticut State Department of Education website located on the student assessment page. From the portal, choose the Smarter Balance Assessment button on the left side of the page. This gives you access to systems associated with Smarter Balance, including, but not limited to, the digital library, airways reporting system, test manuals, and additional resources. To better understand what interim scores tell us about student learning, we first need to know how those scores are calculated and reported. First, the interim assessments are reported use, using what's called a performance category. And the process used to determine the interim reporting categories is the same process used to determine the claim scores on the Smarter Balance Summative Assessments. A combination of a raw score and item difficulty results in a scale score and a standard error of measurement. We then compare the standard cut for that grade level and content area, which then gives us the performance category for a given interim assessment block. The blocks are groups of items that measure a focused group of related skills or concepts. Blocks with harder content likely have more items with higher difficulty values. So what is item difficulty and how does it contribute to a score? While well, some blocks have content that is more difficult and challenging for students than other topics. This means that blocks with harder content will have items with higher difficulty levels, which leads to higher scale scores. Remember that the smaller the number of items on a test, the greater the standard error of measurement. Therefore, blocks with smaller number of items, such as the brief rights, have the largest standard error of measure. This diagram may help you better understand the three performance categories. The black line in this diagram represents the two, three line when scores are reported out in one of four performance levels, as in one doesn't meet the standard, two approaching, three meets the standard, and four exceeds. For grade three, the cut score between levels two and three, that black line, is two, four, three, two. 2,432. So if a student has a scale score of 2,431, they are in the two performance level. At 2,432 or above, they are in the three performance level. 
when a score is clearly above the line, not only in the scale score, but considering the standard error of measure as well, it is considered above standard. That would be the blue dot with the line included. When a scaled score including the standard error of measure is completely below the line, it is below the standard. When a scale score including the standard error of measure touches the line, it is at or near. In short, they combined the two three levels in the interim reporting. Interim assessment reports are available in the online reporting system and airways. While interim comprehensive reporting is similar to the summative, with information available by student, grade, school, and district, these reports only indicate the overall score for ELA and math, with the corresponding achievement level and claim score performance, the classification of below, at or near, or above standard. You will, in short, receive no more information on the interim comprehensives than you would for the summative assessment. The blocks, however, offer reporting by student, class, grade, school, and district, and also by block and target. You can view a single student's responses to each item on a block and compare each response with the average response of the class on that same item. There are two reporting systems currently available on the CT portal that will provide access to interim assessment results. The first is the one you are most familiar with, the online reporting system, or ORS, which is the same system you use to access summative score reports. Users of the ORS will still be able to access individual student reports for the interim assessments, but will not have access to item level detailed information or to be able to view items or student responses to items. The ORS is used for high level student, roster, school, and district reporting with the ability to delineate by subgroup. But for teachers and administrators that want item level reports, <clears throat> Airways is a valuable tool and a source of guidance to tailor classroom instruction based on students' individual performance on the blocks. Airways is the reporting system designed to provide detailed, item-level student re performance reports on interim assessments. As a matter of fact, it only supplies information for the interims and no other assessments. Airways consists of a dashboard page and various assessment reports. Assessment reports are available at differing levels within a district. Access to each assessment report depends on your user role. When you log into Airways, the first stop is the dashboard. The dashboard is the landing page for Airways users. This page displays the sorting options available. If you choose to sort within a column, click on the variable name. Users can find data by selecting assessment name, which provides a listing of interim assessment blocks administered and looks like this. Any category with the up and down arrows in the top right corner is sortable. Other options on the dashboard for Airways include the test reason column, the student count column, and the average score column. In the column entitled test reason, the user can assign a reason for administrating an interim, such as selecting fall or pretest or spring or post-test. These names are available in a drop-down menu and are limited to 13 options. If no test reason is assigned, the column will display unassigned, which is what you see on this slide. To the right of that is a column that lets you know the number of students who completed the assessment. Average scores are only available when administering a comprehensive assessment, and it, that is the sum of assessment scores for all your students divided by the student count. These three columns can be sorted. The last two columns provide the overall performance of the students on a block and the most recent date the assessment was taken. 
although a user can sort tests by when they were given, there is not an option to support any information in the performance distribution column. Note that the bar reflects the three performance categories for the interim, below standard, at or near standard, and above standard. This variable is useful in that it provides the user with a quick check for class performance on a particular block. There are varying levels of access depending on the user permission in the system. As a district administrator, I might click on the assessment block name that is underlined in the assessment name column and see all of the schools in my district listed. From there, I can drill down to the rosters for each teacher in that school. But as a teacher, if I click on the assessment block name that is underlined in the assessment name column, I will only see those students assigned to me in my roster that have taken the block. For this illustration, I chose students who took the grade three editing block. The table provides a list of every student who took the assessment block, their ID, and their overall performance score on that block. What I love about this table is that it begins by showing me what everyone did as a group, and then I'm able to see where students fell in relation to the whole group. I can also opt to click on a student's name, and I will see how they specifically did on this assessment block, and I'm going to present examples of that momentarily. A teacher can choose an item and view the entire class's response to that single item by toggling down the page or the teacher can view how a single student responded to each item in the block by toggling left and right. If a student took the blocks last year, when the teacher selects the student portfolio tab, the results for this year and last year will be available. That page will also include a longitudinal report to visually represent student performance across the years. If the teacher is inclined to see how the assessment is taken using the student's accommodations, the test settings button will allow for that and showcase the item exactly as it was presented to the student. For example, if the student used the streamline accommodation or color contrast accommodation, this test will be presented as it was when the student saw it in Airways. And lastly, on an all school report, that will be available only to those with district level access. But this information is not the end of what's available on this screen. By clicking on the variety of colored vertical bars, I can see the five items on which the students perform the best and the five items on which the students perform the worst. In the five best on the left of the screen and in the five worst, on the right of the screen, I am provided with the item number in blue at the top of the chart. The maximum points possible is just below that, an average of how everyone did on that item and then how each student in this group did on that specific item. The individual scores are aligned to students' names in the table. I can also get more detailed information just by clicking on the blue item number in the row aligned with the student's name. I can see the metadata for that item, such as the difficulty level and the target to which it aligns. I can also see the entire item and corresponding key. Another option is to choose one specific student from the list and click on their name. The screen then provides a detailed chart on how that child did on the chosen block and how everyone else did in comparison. It also provides you with the performance level for the child. Additionally, I can see the test item the way the student saw it based on any designated supports and accommodations set for that student if, if applicable, as well as the student's response. As we noted on the previous slides, longitudinal reports will be available soon that will show how that student did on similar blocks over the years. I recommend taking some time to browse through this system. Because it's a viewing system, there is no danger of altering information during use. Given all the information provided, you might be asking yourself, now what? What should I concentrate on when looking at information in airways? 
I'd like to encourage you to look past the charts full of numbers and the category labels and really dig into the items themselves. Here are some questions that could be asked. Were there items that all of your students struggled with? Were there items that all of your students did well on? Are there any patterns to the way that they responded? Were there outliers, items that all but a few of students did well on? What instruction would benefit those few students? Were there trends in answers based on particular types of items? Does it look like students know what to do with technology-enhanced items like graphing or drag and drop? How are they handling the multi-select items, which allow them to choose more than one correct answer? And lastly, what did you notice while hand scoring constructed response items in the teacher hand scoring system? One new feature we want to highlight is the direct connection to resources in the digital library. Let's imagine that 61 students in a school took the grade 6 geometry block. The results are provided on the screen here. The first thing we might do is ask some questions. How did the students do? What is the overall performance distribution? What might the next steps include? Looking at this information from Airways, I can see that 75% of the students performed above the expectations of the standards. But remember, there are only 14 items in this block. So a performance category of above standard does not guarantee a complete knowledge and understanding of the topic. In short, we know that I just can't stop there. So now, educators can use the Grade 6 Geometry Connection Playlist to influence future instruction based on student performance. The Connection Playlists are designed to help teachers determine how to continue to enhance student learning and mastery of the math standards. A Connections Playlist is a collection of resources in the digital library that address a progression in skills or understanding for a topic. They are created by trained educators. In Connections Playlists, pre-selected resources from the digital library have been aligned with student or group performance on 11 of the interim assessment blocks. If we really focus on the fact that 75% of the students performed above the standard expectation on this block, we would access the section of the connection playlist that provides an explanation of those skills students who are in that performance category are working on with some resources to enhance those high-level skills. Let's enlarge this section so we can see this a little more easily. The students are identified as working on calculating the area of rectangles on a coordinate plane or polygons with fractional dimensions or rectangular prisms. The teacher is encouraged to model how to solve multi-step, real-world word problems involving surface area. Suggestions also include using nets to calculate the surface area of more difficult shapes. In short, these playlists are designed to not only support students who are struggling, but to reinforce that even those students who are scoring above the expected standard still need enhancement in the area of focus. While we recognize that student achievement on the grade 6 geometry block was above the expectation of the standards, this slide shows the same block, but we're now reviewing data in the section that highlights those items on which students struggled. Here we see that item number six was challenging for these students. Only 10% got this correct. So where do we go from here? Well, the first thing we can note is that the metadata in Airways for this item shows it's difficult. Perhaps we need to separate it from the block, making it available to all students on a smart board. This example uses the whole class because overall, so few students correctly responded to the difficult item. As a do now, students would solve the geometry problem alone, and then as a whole group, propose solutions and discuss them. Using a method such as number talks, the teacher would facilitate the discussion to include thinking about the accuracy of the answer talking about which method is the most efficient, and later testing the method by using it to solve for another example of 
the length and height of a box of your own devising that would not be a perfect cube. Geometric knowledge needed for this item assumes that sixth graders know how to calculate area. If that background is missing among the students, it will become apparent during the number talk. Smarter Balance also offers instructional playlists, which are instructional resources that center around the content measured in an interim assessment block. The instructional playlists are intended to supplement the core curriculum and help educators by supplying learning goals and success criteria for focused skill areas. These lists include lessons and resources to reinforce specific skills and are available for both math and ELA. Currently, there are 14 instructional playlists available on the digital library, two per grade, one in ELA and one in math. This is a list of the available instructional playlists by grade. In this grade five math block, I can see that more than half of the students tested did not meet the standards and another 42% are only at or near the expectation. These numbers demonstrate a misunderstanding of the content, and after carefully reviewing the items and all the students' responses, it's apparent that they need more help in numbers and operations in Base 10. To support the teaching of this set of skills, I link to the available instructional playlist for this block. Each available playlist provides a list of student learning goals as well as success criteria to help teachers determine if students have met the expectations for the standards measured in the corresponding block. In this grade five block, teachers are offered five lesson options, although some grades may offer more. The options range from a lesson asking students to create bar models and write simple equations for adding and subtracting decimals using bar model problem solving to a culminating assignment on adding and subtracting decimals. There's even a detailed lesson plan from Illustrative Mathematics to help teach equivalent forms of decimals. Resources in the instructional playlists are hyperlinked to the digital library, and each resource comes with a description. This particular resource includes a video to support students' use of math in real-world situations. Let's take a closer look at what this involves. The video tells the story of the Berg family, who wants to take a short trip in their RV to go fishing. However, they only have $190 for the entire trip. The information provided to students is the amount of money, the starting and ending locations, and the fact that the camper only gets eight miles to the gallon. The students are expected to research the distance between the two starting and ending points and the price of gas in that area. In order to differentiate instruction for those students who really struggle with extended word problems, students might be given the miles in one direction the miles round trip, and even the cost of gas in that area. This activity can be used as a whole group, small group, or individual activity. There are countless ways to connect the information learned from the interim results to instructional strategies that can be integrated into daily curriculum. This section provides information about viewing the blocks and embedding those items and blocks into lessons. The Smarter Balance Interim Assessment Tools, such as AVA, the Teacher Hand Scoring System, and Airways can support teachers in their professional development and pre-teaching activities, lessons, formative or interim assessment goals, and post-teaching follow-up. One such tool we mentioned is the Assessment Viewing Application, or AVA. In order to view the interims, AVA is available on the Connecticut Smarter Balance Assessment Portal. It requires a username and password and allows users to access the interim comprehensives and blocks for both math and ELA at every grade level. For some, AVA may be one of the first resources to access when determining the appropriateness or relevance <clears throat> an interim has in relation to a unit that a teacher is incorporating in class. 
use the assessment viewing application to preview blocks and the content they're measuring. After administering a block and reviewing data results, teachers might use AVA to review items on which students struggled. Teachers can also use an item to demonstrate a skill they're teaching, such as writing an introduction. The item can be shown to all students, and the teacher can model how an introduction might be written or how a paragraph would be edited. These items can also be a valuable part of professional development. Teachers might work through difficult items and incorporate them into their PD to prepare for the assessments, to better understand the expectations, or just to see how their curriculum aligns to being what is being measured. Another way to use AVA is to pre-screen a block in mathematics. You could choose a couple of items to use as a pretest before instructing students on a concept. An example might be the underlying concept with regard to the algebraic rules governing the order of operations. Before instruction, you can direct the student to complete two items. The items might ask the students to correctly interpret a mathematical expression. In a second test, selected items are similar in concept to the first set used as the pretest. You might choose to have that same context, concept, concept asked in two different ways. In other words, the expectation of a standard, as interpreted by Smarter Balance, would require the student to move in either direction, text to expression or expression to text. Both of these pathways, though, are dri driving at the same mathematical understanding. Given this variety in the pretest and also in the post-test is a good idea. What you would look for is which students can respond correctly to the items given after instruction and which may still be having trouble. As a reminder, items in the interim blocks come from the exact same item pool as was used to create the end of year summative assessments. So they're a mirror of the style and difficulty of the items on that test. Another available tool in the Connecticut portal under the Smarter Balance tab is the practice and training tests. The purpose of training tests is to become familiar with the system, functionality, and item types. The tests are not intended to guide classroom instruction. They contain, on average, less than 10 items. Practice tests are a little longer and include items from all measured claims. These practice sessions, again, give students the opportunity to familiarize themselves with a variety of item types, the universal tools available, and some of the designated supports. Students can browse the grade level assessments to introduce them to the content in a stress-free situation. Responses to the practice and training tests are not recorded. Once the students submit their test, it's erased. Teachers can provide short demonstrations, if necessary, on how to respond to an item type or a particularly difficult or complex item. Another way to incorporate the interim assessments to support instruction is to capture depth of knowledge and rigor in grade level instruction. By reverse engineering, I mean that you can determine the likely complexity of the text test questions by grade that the students will eventually see on the summative exam in the spring by studying those expectations from the various blocks. You do not need to administer an assessment block in order to gain this understanding. The items are all available to you in the assessment viewing application. Studying the demands of these items yourself can help you focus your instruction at the appropriate level in your classroom. Let's look at the complexity of concepts for mathematics in measurement and data between grades three and four. This table is a frequency distribution of items by grade and by content. The star in each column indicates that concept that has the most items in each of these grades on the block. In grade three, the concept is area, while grade four, the concept is angles. The table on the previous page shows several things. I know there are 15 items in each of these blocks. The highest frequency concept, as I said before, in grade three is area. 
there are four items in grade three having to do with telling time or converting time, while there are no items at grade four on this topic. The highest frequency concept in grade four is angles, with one third of the items asking about this geometric concept. It's worth studying these items to see the different ways the test presents them. In grade four, nearly half of the items require multiple correct response, while grade three has zero. This is an example of an item that requires all answers to be answered in order for the item to be considered correct. This kind of item shows up frequently in grade four, but not at all in grade three. The implication is that in the classroom, you can model this kind of thinking and provide tasks with a similar set of demands so that students are not surprised when they see this type of item in the spring test. Please note that this item and the picture of the ruler are not on an actual block and are only included for the purposes of illustration. To get a sense of the difference of sophistication between the grade three and grade four mathematics items, one can examine the items across these grades on the same topics. <clears throat> what is the difference in complexity across the grades on the student's ability to deduce facts when presented with, state, with a set of data? Let's try another example that is not an actual interim item, but that we are including for the purposes of illustration. The item would be shared with the whole class, and once an answer is solicited, we would be able to discuss it. Assuming that there is not time lost between visits at each area of the school, and assuming an abiding interest in all the different animals, the answer to this question would show that Christy and her class can spend a maximum of 110 minutes or one hour and 50 minutes visiting the aquarium. This demonstrates the level of complexity demanded of a student in grade three. Let's try one last example that again is not an actual interim item, but that we included for the purposes of illustration. This is also an example of a multiple correct answer item. The key to this item is to work backwards from the questions asked instead of trying to do calculations as you read the numbers. For the first question, the answer is false because five bolts at $1.75 is $8.75. <clears throat> the answer to the second question is false because the information in the item states that there is one bracket per gizmo. The answer to the third question is true, that it will cost $16.50 to make two gizmos. This type of item can be replicated by giving real world data to the students and asking different questions from the same source of data. The Connecticut Core Standards note that the standards leave room for educators to determine the full range of metacognitive strategies that benefit students. We suggest using the interims to support the teaching of these skills such as note taking, which is a critical part of the learning process, helps keep student alert and engaged, supports memory and recall, and provides a record of important information. Teachers can use the literary or informational stimuli from the reading blocks to teach note taking skills. These stimuli were chosen only after we determined that they were great appropriate complex texts. The math problems in the performance tasks are available to help teach step-by-step -step methods in problem solving. And lastly, the listening stimuli, also deemed great appropriate and complex, can be used to teach or reinforce note-taking skills. The stimuli also contain rich tier two and three vocabulary. Our resources tab in the Smarter Balance section of the Connecticut portal contains content relevant vocabulary lists for both math and ELA. These are lists of words that are out of grade level, but are still considered necessary to students because they relate to valuable content required by the standards. Lastly, students should be exposed to short lessons on test taking skills and study skills, both of which can be taught using the items and stimuli from the interim. 
Short discussions concerning test taking might ask students why they chose what they chose, or even if they read the stems closely. Many students don't take the time to review their responses. Getting students into the habit of careful reading of the actual questions and a few minutes review prior to submitting tests can easily improve performance. Since the text in the blocks represent the difficulty level of the types of text students should be using in the classroom, they can be used to teach annotating. Teaching students to annotate text will help them learn to look quickly for important information and to identify areas of difficulty they may be having. Using the pre-selected stimuli from the interims, teachers can model annotating skills for students. When designing the listening portion of the assessment, we originally envisioned showing students videos, longer excerpts of audio, but we were constrained by things like bandwidth. As a result, the audios on the interim and summative assessments are brief, less than 60 seconds, and are not always accompanied with a picture. We love the idea of maximizing access to content on a potentially interesting and educational topic and embedding other resources across various media to support students. Try using the audio stimuli available on AVA to identify a relevant audio topic to present to your class. Present the listening audio and facilitate conversations or activities from that short piece. Then branch out having students do research on the topic they find interesting or extending the information in a short listening stimulus. Use the item stems without the multiple choice options as discussion starters. Literary and informational stimuli can be used as mini lessons or mini checks when teaching a specific skill. For example, these blocks can be great tools when modeling how to analyze within or across text and use text evidence to support important inferences and conclusions. Teachers can use stimuli to teach skills beyond those measured in the block. For example, teachers can use think alouds to expand inferences related to author's purpose, use of language and text structure, among other important literary traits that impact meaning and student understanding. When reviewing students' responses to items, sometimes wrong answers provide valuable information. Focusing on the choice of wrong answer might let you know where your students have been misinformed or what area provides them difficulty. Airway's new toggle feature allows the user to choose an item and toggle through all of the individual responses provided by every student who was administered that session. The brief rights are an amazing support to the teaching of writing. Using AVA, display an item and model the desired skill. Do this as a think aloud so students understand the metacognitive strategies employed when writing. Also, by extending the focus to include more than what a particular item measures, I can teach multiple writing strategies from just one stimulus. For example, the item might ask students to write an ending to a story. Now I can ask students to elaborate on the existing stimuli by incorporating dialogue or details that further develop the characters or the plot. These are just a few of the many ways educators can utilize the interim assessments. I really recommend you visit the digital library for other resources and suggestions to support your teaching. But before we wrap up, a reminder, I can't stress enough throughout this presentation that everyone needs to have a very clear purpose prior to administering these assessments. These are optional, as I noted in the initial slides. So think about what you might do with the information you receive from these tests before opting to incorporate them into your curriculum. In drawing any conclusion or making any decision, test scores always need to be used in conjunction with multiple sources of evidence, including formative measures, school assessments, or homework assignments. And the Smarter Balance interim items and scoring materials are classified as non-secure, non-public. 
This means while we encourage you to use these interims in your classrooms, these materials, including items, stimuli, scoring materials, and sample student responses cannot be posted, reproduced for commercial purposes, emailed, sent home with students, or sold. There are a number of resources available, and I just want to take a moment to review them. In the Connecticut portal, under Smarter Balance, there is a link for Smarter Balance resources, folders containing the math and ELA lists of construct relevant vocabulary, most open-ended item rubrics, translated directions, and several items for students including keyboard charts and multiple multiplication tables can be found there. All of the user guides that would be necessary throughout this presentation are found on the portal under Manuals. For information about student and user management, rosters and appeals, see the TIDE user guide. For information about administering online tests, see the test administration user guide. For information about hand scoring questions, see the teacher hand scoring system guide. And for information about network, internet, and software requirements, see the technical specifications manual for online testing. If you have any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact our office.